to other people that might pop up that might pop on in the next couple of minutes. Uh, really excited that Mickey had uh, um, reached out to the district to say, do you need any club runner training? We were considering doing it at CLT, but we felt that there's people at all kinds of different varying uh, degrees of experience. So we decided that we would have it um, by webinar. And so Mickey made himself available. We've got a beginners and then next Thursday, there's a, a more advanced one. So some of you may wanna join both of them. Um, some of you might be already signed up for the other one. Uh, we'll ask everybody to mute at this point. And what we'll do is um, if you have something super important that you want Mickey to stop and explain something, put it in chat and just start it with important and then we'll we'll stop and, and let Mickey address it. If not, uh, what we'll do is he's he's going to talk for about 45 minutes. He's going to go over a whole bunch of stuff. And then at that point, we'll have a QA, and a and it'll be, you know, you can ask any of your questions at that point. Uh, so if you can hold off your questions till that point, that's great. But if there is something that you you truly need Mickey to explain before, you know, like you're super confused and you're like, I don't even know where he's at. Just put important in the in the chat and um, we'll we'll ask you to ask your question. All right. Excellent. I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Mickey. I'm going to mute myself right now. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mary. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm getting over a cold, so my voice isn't 100% back. So welcome, everyone, tonight. My name is Mickey. I'm from Club Runner. I want to thank the, the district for allowing us to do this. We love doing these trainings. Uh, it's a chance to talk to all of you directly. And just so everybody knows, this this recording will be um, this webinar will be recorded tonight. So we're going to send the recording over to the district. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. So tonight is the beginner session. We're going to cover some basics. Uh, I'm going to try not to move too fast. Like I said, I want to respect the time. Try to get everything into 45 minutes. It may go a little bit longer. Just I want to make sure we get to everything. And then we'll get to Q&A. Q&A can be anything you'd like, even if it's uh, questions um, regarding things we didn't cover. So what I'll start with... Uh, oh, sorry. And and yeah, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just sort of to repeat Mary's thing, if you wouldn't mind um, uh, muting your microphone. Um, thank you very much. Now, second and... So we'll uh, begin with just some very basic things. So let me share my screen and make sure it's the right one. Fantastic. So we're gonna start with uh, what is Club Runner? <clears throat> I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I know you can read it and it will, this is being recorded. Um, these are our words. <laughs> Club Runner, we want to be the Swiss army knife for Rotary Clubs. So what we mean is that's our uh, you know, uh, one sentence elevator pitch. Um, what should, what are the admin uh, needs for your Rotary Club or for the district? We want to be all of that. Events, emails, bulletins. What Club Runner is, it's an online tool to organize and administer your Rotary Club. Um, so we've been around, actually, this needs to be updated. We've been around for 20 years, um, not 15. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been partnering with Rotary for most of those years. Uh, we're going to go over... Um, you know, all uh, what some of those uh, rotary features are. Uh, the big word that we try to use as much as we can is collaborative. So Club Runner is not for one person. It's not just meant for, say, your president or your secretary. It's meant for your entire club. Uh, and there's different entry points. What I mean is your club president or PR chair may use Club Runner differently than what you might use. We're going to discuss that tonight. So, um, and, uh, and by the way, I'm just going to, uh, everyone can see what is Club Runner and everyone can hear my voice okay, correct? Yes. Good. Thank you. That's always important to, to make sure. So <clears throat> I'm going to go right into uh, logging in. So a very important aspect of Club Runner is step one, just logging in. And I'm going to spend just a minute or two on that because it is an important aspect. I'm going to click here on this browser tab. This is a fictitious club. This is our uh, Rotary Club of Kipling. If you're in the GTA, you know that's a subway station. We, we've named all of our um, demo clubs after Toronto subway stops. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have had a, some hot tea or something. 100% of club and district websites on Club Runner, that is all Club Runner, club and district sites, have a member login button at exactly the same spot. Go to the top, 
go to the right and you'll see member login. We don't put the member login at like bottom left or middle or what 100% of our sites. You'll always find the member login button here. Usually it's beside the search box, but this search box actually moves around. But the member login button is at the top right. I'm going to click on it. So um, this is the public site. Before I click on member login, I just want to show you there's no login involved. Anybody can see this. Google has indexed this site. So this is public. You don't need a login. Most of what we're going to address and talk about today is going to be in the member area. In other words, you have to log in in order to do the things we're going to do. I'm going to click on member login. And I, I, it brings you to a blue screen. This is our Google awesome. website cookie notice. So I'm click that. Um, so you type in your username and your password. If you know your username and password, you can skip the you know to the next part of the video. But let's say uh, I'm not really sure of my username or password, or I typed in my username or password. I think it's correct. Then I clicked here on the blue login button, and it gave me this red box. It's a little hard to read. I'll make it a bit bigger. Basically, the box is saying, I can't find your username or password. Um, so there's a couple options here when you can't log in, when you cannot, when it's your, um, your, your login name or password isn't working. So what you do is you can click on either blue button, forgot username or forgot password. Let's just pretend I think I know my username is correct, but I'm not sure of my password. So either button will take you to the next screen. So I'm gonna click on forgot password or forgot username. It takes me to a login retrieval screen. So I what I do is I put in my email address here. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna put in an email address. What's gonna happen is it's gonna email me my login uh, name and a, a link to reset my password. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Once again, yeah. If this doesn't now, if this works and you put in your email and it says you get a little green box that says, I found your email, we're emailing you your login right now. And it only takes a minute or two to reset your password. Um, that's fantastic. But let's take another extreme case. Well, I know what my email is. I typed it in. There's no typos. This is a fake email, obviously, but I click submit. And it says, I can't find your email for whatever reason. So a couple things here. If the system can't find your email, it, um, some people just have multiple emails. You might have a work. So make sure to try your home email as well. Um, in other words, it, there might be more than one email listed in your Club Runner member profile. So try a few different um, email addresses. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to try and speak a bit louder too. Um, so... Um, and then the last thing, right? You've tried your emails. This is my, my work email and this is my home email and you know not, nothing seems to be working. I'm not really sure what to do. There's always a little blue button here. It's very tiny text. It says website contact. I'm gonna click on this. This is the last option. Every club and your district as well has a website contact. This is the person who's gonna help you log in so send them an email, you know, you list your first and last name and just put I can't log in or whatever you'd like to put. And you can send your website contact an email and you can talk to that person that way. Um, so um, like I said, I know I spent just a bit of time on the login, but that's on purpose. The login is really important and we want you to know how to log in. Okay, so I'm going to close this tab and um, I'm just going to pretend that I logged in. So after you log in, I'm going to click this tab right here. After you log in, you will land here. So I've put in my login. I actually put in my login before the webinar started. And I landed on this page. And you come into the private member area. So it's not public. This is members or Rotarians only. So this is now where most of the business or administrative tasks happen here in the private area. You'll know you're in the private area because there's, once again, 100% of the time, there's going to be a blue bar along the top. My Club Runner, Communication, Bulletin, and so on. And there's going to be a gray bar directly below. That's 100% of member areas look like this. So to navigate, you click on a blue button. Now, I'm going to click on all these buttons. No pages will load because the way that it works, you have to click on a blue button. And then you have to click on a gray button right below. So this is the section membership, for example, 
And then these are the subsections, member list and so on. So in order to navigate Club Runner, you kind of have to click twice. You have to click the section and then go to the subsection you want to go to. Okay, so um, uh, you're seeing me click and if you're at home, maybe you're following along, you may see some grayed out menus. In other words, I can kind of click anywhere I want to on this club site. You may not be able to. Why? It's because of something called an access level in Club Runner. Whether you've logged into the club site or you've logged into the district site, you're going to have an access level. And the club access is independent of the district access, meaning you could have the highest access at club, but that has no bearing on your district access and vice versa. So um, if you're, if you're um, trying to do something or follow along on this video, but you can't access something, check your club access level. If you don't know what your club access level is, speak to your club executives or administrators. They're actually the ones who dole out your access. Like they're the ones who determine which member gets access. So um, as you're moving along and maybe you're following along and you, and you come to a command and it's grayed out, it might mean you just don't have the access level to use that specific section of Club Runner. And very, very simply put, um, the access levels in Club Runner, we have actually have many. I'll give you three. There's actually more than just three. Uh, uh, regular member access is at the, uh, we'll call it the bottom end, meaning regular members have restricted access. They can do certain tasks. The midpoint, the mid-level or a pretty high level is called executive access. Okay. And executive access, they have access to quite a few things in Club Runner. And then the highest access is I'm now logged in with the highest access, site administrator. The admins are unrestricted. If you're on a club site and you're an admin or a district site, you're an admin, you have access to the entire club or district site. Okay, so um, it, your access level is going to determine what you can see. The first thing I'm going to do, uh, and now that I'm logged in, <clears throat> pardon me, is I'm going to use these top blue tabs and I'm going to move over to organization. So I'm going to click here on organization. And then I'm going to click here on executives and directors. Now, actually, before I click here, uh, this is very important. You might be following along and maybe you're logged into the district site, not the club site. So most of, uh, actually, all of what I'm doing today is going to be off of a club website. But most of what I'm doing applies to a, uh, a district site as well, meaning um, you know, what you see at a club site is very similar to what you see in a district site. Remember the access levels, right? You won't have access to everything, especially if you, let's say you're a club website administrator, you go to the district site, all of a sudden you're, you have very restricted access. So just something to be aware of, but a lot of the things we're doing today, even though it's on a club site, you can do more or less the same things on a district site. Just uh, on a district site, it's much larger because it's 50 clubs and not one club. Okay, I'm gonna click here on my club site. I clicked on organization and the first gray button is executives and directors. So I'm gonna click here. It's gonna load my club execs and directors page. So this is really important for a couple of reasons. So a lot of people, they think, I'm gonna use the word busy work. A lot of people think this is busy work. Oh, I just gotta put, someone told me to put this in. I, I guess I'll do it and you know, that no one will see this. You, um, your your membership and your executive uh, lists, they get shared with the district and with my rotary. You do not do these things in isolation. You don't do, like, for example, right? We've defined our club president. His name is Rusty. Uh, it's not just the club. It's not just our Kipling club that can see this. It's all um, district people as well. So when you do something like this, when you input in a club executive, um, just remember, you are helping most of Rotary. You're helping uh, your district team. You're helping the Rotary team. So um, the information in Club Runner is only good if it's up to date. If you, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna remove the president's name from uh, this list. I'm gonna click clear. And I'm gonna get rid of Rusty. If the president is missing, I, I mean, in your club, you probably know who your president is. But if this, if he or she's not defined. The rest of Rotary doesn't know who they are. So this step is really important. I'm going to put Rusty back. I'm going to click here on edit. 
and I'm going to choose my member, which is Rusty. Okay, there he is. And I'm going to click save. When I click save, a couple things happen. And we're actually going to, I was actually discussing, maybe I should have flipped it, but we're going to talk about RI integration next. Here's a sneak peek at what I mean by RI integration. When you do something in Club Runner and RI integration is turned on, I'm going to show you how, to, how that gets turned on and off. But if RI integration is turned on, you're just pushing information up and down a chain, club level, district, and my rotary. You input a member at my rotary, it'll flow down to club runner. You input an executive at district, it'll flow down to club, it'll flow up to my rotary. That's what RI integration means. You do something in one spot, let's say the club site, and then it just automatically populates, pushes the information up and down the chain. So when I click, I'm going to define Rusty again as my club president. When I click save, it doesn't just save here on the club site. It also saves on the district site and in my rotary if our integration is turned on. So it's really important to make sure your executives and directors is up to date. And if our integration is turned on, you just have to do something once and it'll flow up or down to district and to my rotary. Uh, something really important, um, as the rotary year is only about two and a half months away, believe it or not, it's very close, uh, July 1st. Click on next year. This is the current year. We're in 23-24. I'm going to click next year. Just if, uh, let's say the uh, the executive list for next year is empty, at the bare minimum, <laughs> please. This is for all the district people and for all the please put in at least your president uh, and as many other executives as you can, but bare minimum your president for next year, right? The reason being is if, if this list were empty, right? If I cleared out the names from this list and it was just a, a list of positions with no names, the um, those executives, right? Your president for next year, secretary for next year, they're going to need to log in the district and log into my rotary. Properly on this list, they don't get access. So, so they can log in to district and my rotary and just won't get the access to do the work they need to do. So make sure your executives are defined, not just for 23, 24, but 24, 25 is, is, is kind of careening around the corner. It'll be, it'll be here before you know it. So that's the club executives and directors list. Now I didn't, you'll notice I didn't go over every last detail. What does add new position mean? What does edit mean? Um, uh, I have a PDF that I've given to the district team, and I'm going to make sure that everybody gets that PDF. The PDF, okay. let me show it to you, okay? It, it, I, I don't want it to be a secret or anything. This is my guide. This is what I'm using for today's webinar, and I'm following along on all these steps. Every um, point in the PDF, we're here at point four, um, it has a help article. So when you click on it, it's got a detailed help article on all the things I didn't cover on how to edit your club executives. That's why I'm not going too deep into one thing. Also, I just wanna make sure we respect the time. So I don't wanna to spend too long in one section. So if you're not sure if you have this PDF, that's okay, I'll make sure that the district team gets it again tomorrow. We'll distribute this PDF. Okay, Mickey, this just, to, just to let you know, Mickey, I, I attached that to the Zoom link. So everybody who's on the call should have it on that same email. Um, and it's exactly what you're talking about. Fantastic. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, if, if you don't have the PDF, just inquire with the district team. They'll make sure you yeah. have it. Okay. I uh, thank you. And, and if we could just ask the couple people um, that have joined us just recently, like Olaid, uh, if you could mute yourself, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, I apologized. No problem. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Mary. Okay. Um, I'm going to move away from club executives and directors. I know we didn't go into all the details. There's all kinds of buttons I didn't press. Um, like I said, please review the PDF. You're going to click on that link. You're going to get a nice detailed article exactly on all the points here. But uh, the reason I want to move on is because today we're kind of skimming the surface of a, several things instead of going like a deep dive into two or three things. So the next thing I want to discuss, because I want to make sure you know about this, is RI integration. So here in organization, the next command over, the next section is RI integration. I'm going to click on RI integration. I'm going to click the first gray button, RI integration settings. So here's how RI integration works. You or 
your club executives set up our integration once, not once per year, once in a while. You set it up once, you have to turn it on the first time if you've never done so. Um, and, and, and there's instructions here. Th these are actually the instructions. You know, how do you actually turn everything on? It's all kind of laid out here. You've never done it before. I want to give everybody um, a backup option because I've been saying, you know, you have website contacts and all of this, but um, I really want to talk about, or I really want to give you this option. When you're think, uh, looking at our integration, let's say it's not turned on for your club. You read the instructions, maybe you're stuck on step three or four or what have you, and you're just not sure who to contact because you were the one tasked with setting up our integration. So nobody else in your club might know. So the one, um, uh, I'm going to ask you to memorize only one thing today, okay? Because uh, everything else has been laid out in a PDF. Everything else uh, we want to give you. But if you're going to memorize anything from today, it's support at clubrunner.ca. I'm going to repeat that. So support at clubrunner.ca is your fail safe. <laughs> Wherever you are in Club Runner, if you're stuck, if you can't log in, if you don't know what our integration is or how to set it up, it doesn't matter the question, please email us. Please, I'm actually going to implore you. We love getting emails and calls from people who might be frustrated or upset or they're just stuck because now we can help them. Now we know that you're stuck on step three or what have you, and we will uh, work through it until the problem is solved. So please, if you, uh, you know, for tonight's webinar, not just for tonight's webinar, but as you use Club Runner, if you have any questions, um, we're, we want to be your fail safe. We want to be put in your back pocket so that anytime you have any questions, problems, issues, you just email us. We will make sure to we'll answer your email and we'll, we'll help you work through Club Runner. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this back on the screen a couple more times tonight. Okay. So our integration, you set it up once. And once it's set up, you are sharing data. What our integration means is it's basically just connecting the club database, the district database, and my rotary. It's just all together, right? It's 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 they're technically different databases. Uh, club Runner is a vendor partner. We collaborate with Rotary International, but we're not like Rotary International's employees. We're, a, we're our independent company, and there's other independent companies worldwide that are also database vendors. So Rotary has their own database. It's gigantic. It's a million plus users. And we, Club Runner, have access to that database because of our database vendor agreement. And so that's why you need to set up database integration, because technically we are two different companies, two different databases. Okay. Um, now, today is just, like I said, I just want you to know that our integration exists and we're going to do a very kind of simplified version or uh, explanation. So I'm going to move on. Please do ask any questions if you have them for Q&A. Um, but um, what I want to do is I want to talk about sending an email. Nikki, if I could just interrupt for just sure. one second. So when you're saying the RI integration needs to be set up once, are you talking the club needs to be set up or each individual person? The club. So just the club, club. Okay. sets it out for Okay, every just wanted member. to clarify that. Okay, thanks. I just wanted yeah. to make sure. Okay. No, that's that's a great question. You no, you wouldn't need to set up for every member. Some clubs have like 100 members. No, no, no. So you set it up for your club and then all the members integrate and you know, so it's a one-time thing. And once again, you're, it's very likely um, your our integration has already turned on. There's probably nothing you need to do. Uh, but like I said, it's another excuse to put this back on the screen. Uh, email us. If you're not sure, if you don't know how to check, if you have any questions, send us an email. We'll help you out. Okay. But uh, thank you, Mary, for that question. Um, now, I want to talk about sending an email. I'm here on the Rotary Club level. I'm on a club site. I'm not at the district site. If you or any Rotarian is logged in at the club level, like on your club site, you can send email. Access level doesn't really matter because all members can send each other emails. I want to email my entire club. I want to email three members or five or one or what have you. So everybody can send email if you're using the club site. District site is different. Let's say because your login name and password gets you into three things, the club site, the district site, and the Club Runner mobile app. 
right? So the, the app is the third thing. Um, you log into the district site and you're like, hey, I'm a club website admin and my lo it accepted my login. I'm logged in. Email is grayed out. What's, what gives I, I should be an admin? Remember, the access is different between club and district. So most people can't send emails to the district. And we actually get that as a, as a support email. Uh, hey, I'm logged in. I can't. My email is grayed out. Uh, and, and usually right away, it's like an alarm bell for us. Oh, you probably logged into the district. So make sure you're logged into a club site if you want to send email. Um, uh, it's not like you can never send an email through the district, but your access needs to be upgraded by the district's team. So the district team will determine who gets to send emails because the district email will have about 2,000 members, right? So it's a big email. Now I'm in the club site. Let's go send an email, <clears throat> pardon me, and click on communication. And then um, the first gray button is email services. <clears throat> oh, wow, I'm really sorry. I thought, I thought it was over this cold. <clears throat> We're here on the page that says club communication. Just gonna very quickly go over all this. So the club communication page, what it does I can see my emails only. Now I have an option to show all emails right here. This button right here says show all emails. If I click it, I can see all the emails every member of my club is sending out. Can you do that? I don't know. You need to be in a website admin. You need to have the highest level of access to see something like this. The show all emails is not for everybody. Remember I'm logged in with the highest access. Very likely, if you're a regular member, if you're not an admin or a club exec, you're going to click, you're going to see your emails only. So how does Club Runner email work? Club Runner email is an outbox, but not an inbox. Let me explain. So you send emails out of Club Runner. You can do that. When anybody replies, right? Any recipient you send to replies, it goes straight back to the email you have on file with Club Runner. Let's pretend I'm a Rotarian and I have a Gmail address, right? That's my primary email is uh, mickey at gmail.com or whatever. Um, when I send out of Club Runner, I'm, I'm sending through the Club Runner software. But as soon as someone replies, it's going to go back to my Gmail or if I have Hotmail or AOL or whatever. Why? Why is it set up like that? Why can't I just have a regular inbox like Gmail gives me? Um, we just don't have the server capacity to facilitate having uh, email, like a full blown inbox for the tens of thousands of our members. So you will send out of Club Runner, but then as soon as someone replies, it'll go back into your standard email. Why not just use your standard email? I got Gmail. It's, um, I can just use that. So there's some reasons why you want to use a Club Runner email. First is the member lists and executive lists. I'm going to click here on compose new message. I actually do an email. So I'm going to click on compose message and it's going to get me through some steps on how to do an email. This is probably step one. It's probably the reason you want to do a club runner email. These lists, active members, inactive club execs are constantly updating. A member leaves your club, they will be removed from the active list. The member joins your club, they'll be added. Um, these club execs and directors lists, I'm going to talk about them in a second, um, are really um, important. It can be powerful to some people, but these lists are dynamic, meaning they're never just set in stone. Like it's it's not like, you know, you have your Gmail or Hotmail, or whatever inbox, and you have a contact. If you don't update your contacts, they don't just update for you. In Club Runner, essentially, your address book updates every year because Next year, which is three months away or whatever, July 1st, the um, uh, your executives will be, um, here, I'm going to turn my light, it's getting dark already, uh, the executives will change. You don't need to do anything. The um, This list is dynamic. It'll just change itself. That's probably one of the biggest reasons to use Club Runner uh, for your email, at least to send out emails, is because everything here is just, it just keeps track of itself. Okay. So you, you, you probably know your active and honorary members. I'm going to click the plus sign and I can expand the lists, right? Um, you can see all the categories, like uh, a lot of clubs are doing active corporate these days. Um, I want to talk about this special list right here. Club execs and directors current year is not the club execs and directors 
just of your club. It's the club execs and directors district wide. This is a special list. I'm going to click the plus sign. Now, this is our uh, demo site. So we only have like five or six uh, clubs in here. But your district, uh, I'm sorry, your club will have access to the 50 plus clubs. So this won't say zero of five. This will say zero of 50. In other words, it's all the presidents district wide, all the PEs district wide, secretaries, treasurers, so on. If you're doing, let's say, one of those kind of multi-club events, right? We get a lot of those where a club is like, we don't just want our members coming. We want maybe people in our in our direct area. We want to invite the entire district. This is our biggest fundraiser of the year. This is what you do. You would use the club executive and director's current year list to target. I want to see, I want to send an email to every secretary or to five secretaries or to 10 PEs, whatever you'd like to do. Does everyone have access to this list? No. So this club execs and directors current year, if you are properly defined as a club executive, if you're co correctly defined as club secretary, treasurer, president, and so on, you'll get access to this list. If you're not a club executive, this you won't see this list. So if you log in, you say, hey, I'm a website admin. I have access to anything I want to do. Uh, what is my club execs and director list? I can't access this. Remember, some website admins are not necessarily club executives, mutually exclusive, right? So if you have the highest access, but you're not a club executive, you won't get this list. This list is possibly one of the biggest reasons a lot of our presidents and secretaries use the club runner email, because you this is your way to contact anybody you'd like in the district, or I should say any executive you'd like in the district. The rest, <clears throat> step two and three and four, it's a five-step process. Um, you know, you type in your subject. I'm going to hit the minus sign beside templates and merge fields. This is our beginner webinar today. I don't want to talk about database merge fields. Um, you can, uh, I, not that I don't want to show it. I just, I, I guess I don't want to show it because I don't want to get too advanced here. So um, I let's just pretend I'm going to click expand here. I want to select all the presidents across my district. Right now, it's only five. Like I said, you'll have access to about 50. I'll click done. So I'm going to send a, an email to every president in my district. Uh, I'm going to put in my subject. I'm going to type in my email content here. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you can add images. You can do all kinds of things here. Um, step three lets you add attachments. So maybe a PDF or a Word doc or whatever you need to send. You can add an attachment. Step four in the email process, you can include a link to the recipients. What that basically means is, right, um, who is getting this email. Um, and, and then uh, you can also CC yourself, like you can send yourself a copy, right? I'm not going to check either. Step five may be useful for you because, uh, you know, 90% or more of the time, you're just going to send right now. You're just going to I want to send this email. I just want it to go out like tonight or tomorrow morning, whenever. I just want it to go out. You can schedule emails. Let's pretend you're going on a, I don't know, you're taking your family on a, on a, on a, on a vacation this weekend. You're going to be gone, but you still want to send an email, let's say Saturday morning. You can actually schedule an email to go out Saturday. Let's make it nice and bright and early. To make it six in the morning, and, and now everybody thinks, wow, this is one dedicated person sent an email at Saturday at 6 a.m. They're, they're amazing, right? You're not. You're probably still in bed, but the email is automated to go out. And by the way, scheduling can be useful a lot of times for large emails. Here's why. Because let's say you're sending an email to, I don't know, 100 people or what have you. Um, you schedule it. And then right up until the time and date that it's set to schedule, you can cancel it. So if something changes, if somebody finds a typo or whatever, you can stop the email from going out before it gets sent, edit it, change it, and then reschedule it. So scheduling does have its place if you ever want to try um, doing that. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't want to actually need here. I'm just going to send it to me uh, just because some of these are connected to uh, some of my colleagues here. So I'm going to go, oops, I'm sorry, I spelled my name here. Aaron, oh, that's fine. I'll just send it to one person. It's okay. So I'm going to send this email, and it, it's going to be in a queue because I'm going to schedule it for Saturday at 6 a.m., and I'll click send. Now, 
sent to myself is actually kind of uh, useful. Why? Once again, those big emails, right? 100 people or like a big event. If you, you can send to myself, click this button like five times, check it. Oops, a typo. Check it again. Oh, I found another typo. In other words, you're the only one who gets the email. When you click send to myself, you can test it. You can be like, oh, this looks good or oh, it doesn't, I need to change this. And then when you're satisfied, then you can click send. I'm going to click send right away. It says, hey, just to one recipient. Yeah, this is just a test. I'll click OK. Remember, I haven't sent the email. Um, here is my email, and it's scheduled to send at 6 in the morning on Saturday because I want to be a keener. Um, and I can cancel. I can click here, and I can actually cancel. Oh, I'm sorry. I can cancel this email and say, whoops, I got to change something or whatever. So sometimes this the scheduling send is useful. OK. Oh, I hope I didn't spend too much time on that. I'm going to scroll up. I better move on to the next thing, uh, which is Club Runner contacts. So this is email. We have not explored absolutely everything, but if you if you're kind of um, following along up to now, you you at least know the basics of sending email, right? Um, there is a second really important reason. I guess I'll spend another minute on emails. A really important facet or reason to use Club Runner email. You know, you have Gmail and Hotmail and AOL. I'm sure, you know, most people do. Um, and the reason people use Club Runner is because of stats. Um, when I'm looking at my list of emails, um, first of all, it has to be sent. So this is scheduled. It's not going to have any stats. It hasn't been sent yet. But you can see all these other emails that were sent out. When an, or after an email gets sent, Club Runner accumulates stats. Who received the email? Did the email bounce for some people? Like, did they think that email was spam? And we try our hardest to determine if the person even read the email. This email that was sent, thank you for speaking. I'm going to click here on this down arrow. And there's a down arrow icon beside all emails. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click stats. And I can actually see uh, this is a pretty low, only 4%. This is a testing club. So probably 20 of these uh, email addresses are fake. It's probably why they open, but you can see you opened the email. Uh, did it get delivered to all your recipients? That's actually really important, right? Um, there, there are some, uh, some times where it didn't get, uh, uh, where it was undelivered. We have a new category in email stats called clicks. We, you can now, um, uh, uh, see if someone has clicked within the links of an email. Okay, so it's a link counter. So let's pretend you're sending an event registration link, a PayPal link, whatever link, and you wanna make sure people clicked on it. If you scroll down, you can actually see if uh, people actually uh, clicked on the links inside your email. Um, it's not 100% accurate because people have some very aggressive security features, but it is a great way to kind of gauge like, hey, I, I needed people to register for this event. Let's say uh, everybody, lo nobody looks like they actually, they opened the email, but nobody clicked on my link. At least that's what I'm seeing in my stats. So the email stats are another important facet of, um, of Club Runner. Sorry, I spent a bit of extra time. Let's move on to Club Runner contacts. Okay. I'm going to move Mickey, away. before you oh. go on to that, just a quick question. I, I don't know if this is contacts or not. Will you be talking about the distribution list? Is that Contacts? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm going to click on contacts and I'm going to go to manage contacts. And I want to talk about exactly what Mary brought up because she brought up a great point. In Club Runner, there's at least two um, ways and, and contacts and custom distribution list. What that means is it's great if I'm sending an email to one person. It's rare that, you know, maybe you will send one to one, but most people have to send to, 10, 50, 100,000 people. So you can make categories and you can organize your recipient lists. When you have a custom distribution list, the way that the custom distribution list works, it's Rotarians only. So maybe members of your board or you know your top execs, uh, and that's fine, but contacts is different from custom distribution lists. While custom distribution lists is um, uh, um, Rotarians only. Contacts is anybody. I met a fantastic woman at, you know, the other day, she would make a great speaker. 
I want to put her in as a contact. I want to email her from my club site so I can keep in touch. I hope she'll come and speak to our club. That is a contact. Anybody you want, Rotarian, non-Rotarian, you can mix them together. You can say, I want a, a special list of, I don't know, VIPs. And it's a mix of some of my members. It's a mix of the DG. Maybe it's people I've just met randomly. Like, And that's how contacts works. It actually works exactly the same as a contacts on your phone. A contact, you have members in your club and members have a ton of information. Contact is someone's email address, their phone number. It's just a way to keep tabs on or to keep track of someone who's a non-member. Let's add a contact and I'll show you. So I'll click here on add new contact. And um, I met Bill Gates the other day, because why not? He, he, I mean, I think he's donated like millions to Rotary. Hopefully he'll come to our club and donate like, I don't know, half a million dollars or something, right? That's his lunch money. So, um, uh, you know, um, let's just say I just met anybody, right? It doesn't matter uh, uh, who it is. So um, actually, I, I can't, sorry, I can't put that in. Um, um, so you input the contact, you put in whatever info you have, you can, uh, you have to check this box. I've received content at consent. In other words, I can't just randomly like meet somebody and put them in. Like they have to kind of agree. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to speak with your club or be a club contact or whatever. And when you save, you've now got this person that you be anybody. It doesn't have to be a person, it can be an organization. Um, you know, maybe a, a, a business is really keen on, I don't know, funding some of your projects. So you can add them as a contact. And now you've got this individual or, or company or what have you, you can now email them. And remember, I use the word you, what I kind of meant to say was your club now has access. So I didn't just put Bill Gates in for me, the rest of your club can now, um, uh, the rest of your club who has executive access or higher can also access the contact list. So the contact list is not for the entire club, but it's for your executive access and higher. So if you have executive access, you can go into the contacts, see all the contacts in this list. It is super, um, I hope it will be super useful for your club because it's a great way to kind of uh, amalgamate different lists and members, non-members, we don't discriminate. You can add, uh, you know, all, all kinds of, um, so there's something called a contact group, okay? So a contact group are the customized groups, right? Um, the Friends of Rotary, uh, I have some Ryla students, maybe Rotaract, whatever. I can add special groups and put like, 120 or 100 contacts into these groups. So next time I send an email, I don't need to check 100 boxes. I just need to check my contact group for, let's say, Rotaract students, and it'll just send one email to say 20 or 100 recipients. And that's the contacts in a nutshell. I have grossly not gone over too much stuff because I'm looking at the clock. I'm going to keep going. And, and like I said, I'm sorry, there, there's a lot more buttons to click here. Um, I, I knew I wouldn't have the chance to click on everything tonight. That's why the PDF has a help article that goes into much greater detail about contacts. Remember the goal today, I just want you to know that these sections of Club Burner exist. Okay, um, I wanna talk about documents. I'm gonna move along the top blue tabs. I'm gonna move away from the section. I'm gonna click on organization. And then here, the fourth gray link is documents. So I'm gonna click on documents. Documents is your club's version of Dropbox in a sentence, right? It's our ele another elevator pitch. So when your club would like to share files, you put them in the documents, uh, a PDFs, Excel, PowerPoint, what have you. So uh, documents can have folders and the folders can have files. It's, it's kind of similar to how the document and file system works on your computer. Documents is accessible or readable by your entire club, regardless of access level. Let's say I'm a regular member, right? I have the lowest access level. I can still come in here. I can view all the documents. But if I have regular or basic access, I can't edit the documents, can't delete, can't move things around. I have what's called read-only access as a regular um, access level. If I come into documents, I can download whatever I want. I just can't touch the documents, okay? So that's an important facet of the documents is 
you can give um, ac um, um, these files to anybody you'd like in your club, but they can't um, edit or delete unless they have special access. Number two, in documents, another consideration number two for documents is um, you'll see some documents, if you look at the, this one, Helping Hands has a padlock icon. It's a little hard to see. May Barbecue Release Form does not have a padlock icon. Documents can be private, this padlock icon, or public, no padlock icon. Private means that you must know your login in order to view this document. Public means anybody can view the document, no login required. Uh, let me show you. I'm gonna click here on get link in the documents, okay? And it says big long link to the document, which by the way, you can email anybody you want. In fact, let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna copy this big long uh, document URL. I'm gonna email it to, I don't know, 100 people and only 20 of them are Rotarians. So um, in my club, so 20 people know their logins and the other 80, they don't even have logins. So it, it, I'm logged in in this web browser, right? I'm logged into my club right now. So I'm gonna click here to open a new tab. I'm just gonna paste and go to this document and you'll see that it opens, right? So, uh, oh, actually good, okay. Um, it asked me for my login and password because it's a private document. It is not a public document, okay? So this can be very useful. Um, why? Because at some point your club and your district is gonna need to have lists of people, their names, their emails, their phone numbers, their home addresses. You do not want that to be public. Google, if Google can index it, Google will index it. In fact, we've had to intervene and step in, help districts and clubs out because they accidentally put like their member list, you know, they made it public. We rolled it back. Like it, it's not the end of the world. It just means um, the reason we have private documents is specifically for those cases where you have a list and it's got people's phone numbers, emails, it's all confidential, make it private. Do not make it public. Like I said, Google doesn't need your help. It will index anything it can get its hands on. I'm gonna close this window. So you can add a document. Um, you can add multiple, you can add folders, you can down. I'm just gonna click add, okay? Just so you can see the process. Like I said, I'm gonna move on and then I wanna get to Q and A. Um, you can give the document a title. You know, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about permalink as a database name. I'm just going to say that and move on. You can add a little description, the document folder. Which folder should I stick this file in? Should it go into one of my subfolders? You can choose that if you want to. And then, you know, just very important. Should this be a public document, meaning anybody can view it, or is it does it have lists of phone numbers, emails? If it does, 100% of the time, make sure it requires login. That way it's private to your club members only, okay? And um, you can even, uh, we have a new feature now. You can even prevent uh, Google from searching this. Uh, it's not 100% foolproof. Um, it, it usually is, but may, um, um, requires login, 100% foolproof. If you put uh, this uh, option in and you say, this is gonna have a list of my phone numbers and emails, uh, even if Google finds it, it can't do anything because it doesn't know your club runner login and password. It won't even bother to index. It'll just move on. Okay. So, um, but you can definitely check this if you don't want the uh, a search engine to, um, to to index your file. I'll hit cancel here. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to discuss is the um, the club runner mobile app. And uh, just as I was starting the webinar, we're getting prepared this evening. My normal way of doing the app has crashed. I we have to re reinstall that program. So we're gonna to improvise tonight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain the mobile app using our mobile app page. I'm gonna open a new tab and then I'm definitely gonna to get to your q and A. I'm gonna I'm gonna go here to our mobile app page, the Club Runner mobile app. So right off the bat, it's free for iPhone or Android. Try and grab your attention because it's really important that um, you know that there's no cost for this. You're in the districts and clubs, it's included in the subscription. Let's say your Rotary Club doesn't have Club Runner. It's fine. You can still download the app. The district, right? District 7080 covers everybody. So all the clubs in District 7080, all the members in every club can download the app. 
You can only use the district uh, portion of the app, but that's fine. You can still use the app. So if your club doesn't have Club Runner, you can still use the app. Why do you want to use the app? Let's explore some reasons. I want to see if I can incentivize this because um, really, right, if the, if the why isn't there, then yeah, why would you use this app? So the mobile app is your Rotary Club and District in your pocket on the go. You can access it anywhere. By the way, our app does not need internet. So if you're in the subway or something, you can still use the app. You can't make phone calls and stuff, obviously, but you can look up members and do all kinds of things. So the mobile app has a member directory. That's probably the biggest thing. The app, um, a lot of clubs, they print uh, sheets, you know, the member lists, like I've actually helped some clubs, like we're going to create a binder, we're going to send it to a print house, and they create these beautifully like rich uh, member lists. And those member lists are awesome. And then in like two months later, they're out of date because somebody has joined the club, somebody has left the club, and now that paper list is obsolete. So the mobile app member directory is constantly updated. You add a member, you lose a member, uh, it all just gets updated in the in the app directory, right? So um, that's why it's really useful. The member directory, let's say you find a member and you know I want to talk to John or Susan or Frank or whoever, you can call them on your phone, you can text them, and you can email them if that member has a uh, phone number, email, and uh, you know address and all that uh, defined. So. Um, that's really useful. That's probably the biggest use of the Club Runner mobile app is a mem member directory. Now, there's a, and I'm, and I'm really sorry I couldn't show you this tonight. There's a club version and a district version. The district version of Club Runner means you can search the entire district and say, I met uh, Susan and I, I can't quite remember what club she's in, but I know she's in my district. I'm going to search for the name Susan and oh, there she is in, you know, club number, whatever. So the district version of Club Runner is very large. It's all the members in your district, all the executives. You can email and text people and, uh, you know, call them that way. Um, so the, the member directory, hopefully alone, is enough for you to at least try to download the app if you haven't already. Okay. Clubs, ex execs, and directors. Who are the club president, secretary, treasurer? You probably know that for your own club. Remember, you can also view it across the entire district. So who's the club president in Rotary Club of X in District 7080? You can find out all that information. It is defined there, right? It's, it's, it's in there. Um, you can view what we call stories um, or posts, right? So your club is going to maybe post about an event or something interesting that's happened. You can view all those things on the app. Um, there's a new feature now called mobile message broadcasts. You can send and receive messages within the app. It's not a text. It's not an email. It's an app to app message. So, uh, you know, right now we're in, luckily we're in spring. Let's pretend it's, I don't know, January, February, something, you know, winter. And then tomorrow's meeting is canceled because of a snowstorm or something. You can send a notification using your app and you can send it to everybody in the club. The catch is, it's, it'll get sent to whoever in your club has the app installed on their phone. They don't need to have it running. They just need to have it installed on their phone, okay? And it's not a text, what it is. You know, when I get a voicemail on my phone, or you might do the same, something pops up in the top and says, hey, here's a little alert. You got a voicemail. That's what this app notification is. It's an alert on someone's phone. It's a bit harder to ignore than say an email. So try to, if you never use a, a, a broadcast, uh, try, try to send a, a, a message broadcast to your club just to see what it's like, okay? You can register for events and speakers. You can register for all the events happening in your club, for all the events happening in your area and district events. You got a district conference and the district has turned on registration, you can register through your phone. It's all there. I promise you did. Try it out. I, I, I bet some of you have already, but like I said, I'm happy to repeat this stuff because someone out there has not used the app yet. So all of these features are there to incentivize you. And I hope the price is right. It's free. So let's move on. So club details. Club details may seem innocuous. Like, okay, well, I already know how to get to my meeting, so I don't really need this feature. AGs 
and DGs and people who need to go visit clubs, this is invaluable. Why? Because the club details have this little map. Oh, I'm sorry. This little map will load Google, Google Maps or Apple Maps. So as long as the club keeps their information up to date, I'm sitting in my car, the car is idling. I need to get to the next club. I'm not really sure where it is. I can fire up this map, tap on it with my finger and load my Google map and get turn by turn direction for the club meeting if the club has kept their information up to date. So it's super valuable for AGs. You might have to go visit 10 clubs, right? Over the next couple months. Um, you can view your attendance. How are you doing? Do you have 100% attendance or 85% or whatever? You can view your attendance. Now, some clubs, they don't, they don't prioritize attendance anymore. That's fine. It's there if your club uses attendance. If, if not, that's also fine. And then the last thing, you can now edit your profile. So your uh, email, your phone number, your address changes, you move. Uh, you don't necessarily need to open your laptop anymore. You can just open your phone, edit your profile in the app, hit save. Remember what our integration, you saved in the district, you saved in my rotary. You didn't have, you didn't have to take out anything larger than your phone to do so. Okay, I'm going to stop. Like I said, I, I, I think I went over time a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to stop and I'm just going to pause and I would love to take your questions. So here, I'll just pause sharing just for a moment. Okay, does anyone have any questions at all? You can just unmute yourself. I do, but I'll let other people go first. <laughs> Betty Jo, did you have a question? Yes, please, Mickey um, and Mary. Um, in the next section, will you talk about how it works when a member um, doesn't, like they don't know their email address or their password? And the reason being is we get a, a reply from an older member of our club who has no idea why we're getting it. We don't know how to fix that. Is that in the next section in next let's, week's lesson? Let's do it here right now because okay. it's being recorded. I'm going to share my screen again. And the only reason I'm going to share my screen is to bring up the excuse for the older member. Actually, older member, doesn't matter who. Um, please. Oh, actually, let's do this. Um, I, I, it's not fair to not. Please give them our email. Please give them. And if you might be like, I don't want to email. So please give them our toll free anywhere in North America, 2582. 855 6212582. -2582, and then option two for support. Uh, we would love to talk to that member. We actually do that uh, several times a day because, you know, we have, um, I'm going to say cut at least a dozen or two times, uh, clubs all over the world. I don't know how to log in. I don't even know what my own page is. Like, um, um, I want to say this right. We want to take that call if we can take it off your hands because sometimes login requests and I'm not like sometimes they take 20 minutes, right? We have, the person is struggling. Maybe they're not that proficient with technology. Like I said, that's why we're here. We want to take that call from you. So please give that person or any person struggling with Club Runner our email address. Here, I'll put a I'll put a space here. Enter um, or a phone number. We'll talk to them. We'll we'll take them off the ledge. We'll we'll walk them through the process. We'll get them started at least. But yeah, please do uh, send that information over to us. It's a great question. Thank you, Benji. All right. I have a quick question too. Yes. Um, I think you kind of answered it, but uh, I want to put it for our situation. So um, I know Betty Joe's there, and others of us are very much involved in youth and. I think I saw on the screen at one particular point that if we wanted to send a email to all those that are Rotary Youth Exchange executive officers or people who might be the Rotary advisors for Interact Clubs or those that coordinate RILA with um, each of their clubs, can I tailor make that or, or is it there somehow already? You can do both. So you can tailor make it if you know names and emails of say special people, uh, special executives, whatever. And let me share my screen again, okay? Um, but what I would say is here, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna click on this tab. I'm gonna go to uh, communication and email services, okay? We're gonna go back to email because uh, I'm just gonna open one of these drafts. Like I really should delete these drafts, but I'm gonna open one of these drafts. And um, 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 before you make something from scratch, come to you know create an email 
and then click here on club execs and directors. There might like Ryla chairs, all that. It might, this, this is a testing club, so it's very small. It might be listed here. Your uh, club execs and directors current year list, I guarantee will be larger than this demo site. So check to see maybe Ryla chairs is a box you can click on and just send an email right away to like the right. Now, now, maybe not. If not, if the, the group or groups of people you need are not here, I'm going to scroll up and we talked about contacts, right? So I'm going to click on contacts and manage contacts. The, the downside with contacts is as manual. You have to manually add people, but you can add in Ryla people or chairs or whoever you'd like uh, here in the contact section. But definitely, I'm going to do it again. Communication email services, and uh, you can compose a new message, but I'm just opening this draft here because I got so many drafts. And click the plus sign beside club execs and directors current year. See if the list isn't already pre-made for you. It might be, like it's a 50-50 chance that the, um, that the if, it's a, if it's a group of executives, I can almost guarantee it'll be here. I can't completely, but almost guarantee that the list will be here, okay? But uh, thank you, Miles. All right. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback on that one because I have a yes. question. Um, so we have some people considered friends of Rotary that yes. are not Rotarians. And mm -hmm. so thank you for teaching me how to put in a contact. So uh, that's fantastic. Now, if I put somebody in my contacts, that's now a friend of Rotary, how do I get that distribution onto my email? Like, how do I then send an email to those people? That's it. Okay. Yeah. Cause we didn't really cover that. Cause like yeah, I said, cause I'm still over. confused about how to get their names into something so that, and this might help you too, Miles, um, for people like, you know, so for example, your interact, um, teacher guidance counselors or whatever, like we can set them up in, in the contacts and hopefully a distribution list that will then be on our site that everybody would have access to from our club. So uh, step one is kind of exactly what Mary said. Uh, you have to put the contact in. You know, you go in, uh, contacts, manage contacts. Like you add the contacts and you create your categories or contact groups. Where are your contact groups? Here. Uh, and and once again, this is yeah. not going to be for everybody because, you know, I'm, an, I'm a site admin. I can do whatever I want. I have access to everything. So if you're following along, you may not have, if you're regular member access, you will not see this contact groups. This is for uh, club executives and people with higher access levels like executives and higher. So if I click on contact groups and hit the plus sign, it's all the different contact groups that I've made in the context module. So my bar, you know, I had an event for barbecues and I had, you know, here's my Ryla and, you know, so on and so forth. So um, uh, you click the plus sign beside contact groups and you have access to every contact group you've created. We didn't talk about contact groups, so I'm gonna scroll up. Okay, so I'm gonna move away from email, but I hope that makes sense. You, you come here, you click the plus sign beside contact groups, you get access to everything. I'm gonna hit the minus sign. I'm gonna scroll up and go to contacts and manage contacts. Here in the contacts, what happens is when you create a contact group, it's just a category. It's just like a listing of a subset of people. I can, sure, I can send an email to everybody, but most of the time you don't want to do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on, um, uh, on manage groups. We didn't talk about this. I'm going to click on manage groups. Okay. I'm going to add a contact group and I'm going to call it, geez, what am I going to call it? Ryla, uh, how about Ryla? supervisors, I don't know what to call it, but it's anything, right? It can be whatever you want, just a category, just a subset of people, right? These are Ryla, you know, whatever, right? Uh, you can label it, you can put a color on it if you want, I'm not gonna bother, but I'll click save. So what did I just do? Um, I've now got this um, kind of group here or this subset of Ryla supervisors. So maybe it's, uh, you know, club executives or the district person or what have you. So when I add a new contact, right, I'm going to click add new contact. And uh, it's going to be my Ryla guy, right? Uh, or girl, um, and whatever it is. And I'm actually not even going to put an email. Okay, so I'm going to add, uh, now I can manually add a contact this way, and that's fine. If I do it like, you know what I clicked on? I clicked the orange add new contact buttons to pop this up. 
And, you know, I can I can do that here. But you know what? This is my Ryla guy. They should really go on Ryla supervisor. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. Instead of clicking add, add new contact is just a general contact. Throw them in the contact list. You can take that contact and put them into several contact groups later. What if you want to add them directly into the contact group right away? I'm going to go to my contact group. I'm going to click Ryla supervisors. Okay. And I'm going to add uh, a new contact. Okay. And do you see that it says assigned to? So now I've got my Ryla guy, right? I'm, I'm just going to keep it short. Um, and he, he or she it is now automatically assigned. And I can take it out. I can click the little X and remove it. But I actually want him or her to go into my Ryla supervisors list, right? So if I scroll down again and click on Ryla, you'll now see bracket one. There's my Ryla person, right? And you can see this. Remember, it's a database, right? It's a living database. Let's go back to communication. Let's go back to email services. Uh, I, I'm not, you can compose a new message, but I'm going to edit my draft again. But you, oh, but you can start a new email and click open. Scroll down to contact groups and look for, it's alphabetical, look for Ryla supervisors. Now, I, I'm going to click expand. Um, uh, there's my guy. <laughs> I can't click on him. I didn't put in his email. So that's my fault. I should have put in his email address. I actually can't select him until I go edit the contact and actually give him or her an email. So that's why I can't select Ryla guy. But he's all there um, or she. Like the, the this is all interconnected. You add a bunch of contacts, you get instant access to them when you send an email. Did that make sense, Mary? Absolutely. So the only one other question that's yes. still connected, is there any way of making that category? So in our case, friends of Rotary, because they're kind of like members of our club. Can we add them as a drop down under the active and honorary members? Because I, I saw you had some, you had in there active satellite and active corporate. So I'm, we don't have those categories. So is there a way, like right now we only have active and and honorary, mm -hmm. is there a way to add that in? Because you've got some two that are different. Yeah. It, um, it, so the active list, right here. Let me let me contract all the other ones. I just want to focus on this. The active list. You want to put friends of Rotary in the active list? Would, no, would I, I'd like it to be a subcategory. So you got active, active corporate. I'd like it to say then friends of Rotary so that if somebody's sending emails out, it's right there and they don't forget to send that to the friends of Rotary when, when it's appropriate. And they're not Rotarians. Yeah, so I would add them in the, as a contact. Yeah, that's the tricky part. So active, this this is completely separate from contacts. We This is not a contact at all. Oh, okay. Like real okay. people, I shouldn't say real people, real Rotarians, Rotary yep. IDs, the whole nine yards, they sync with the Rotary International. A contact is just a name and an email and a phone number. Okay, so, all right. So we, I would say no. I guess, I guess I'd have to say no. We'd, we would never want to mix the two okay. because this is for people in your club and then contacts is just anybody, anybody. So yeah. they'd have to live in two separate groups. You could, you could create a contact group and add a bunch of your members in there. So let's say you, maybe you create, I call this Ryla supervisors. Maybe this word changes to Ryla team and Ryla team can be some of your members, some district people, some some non-Rotarians. So you could do it that way. But we can't take these contacts and put them into the active category because okay. it's just, yeah. Yeah, you know. that makes sense. And I think that would help with Miles and Betty Jo. And I'll let Betty Jo ask her question uh, when they want to have some amalgamated groups to do with the youth and stuff. Because some would be members, some would be non-members. They would have to go through the contact groups. Um, Betty Jo, did you have a question? Actually, I think you guys nailed it right at the end. I was going to ask what's the difference between a distribution list and a contract group, but I'm assuming distribution list has to be within your club, members that are already in there by the sounds of it, versus custom contract groups, which could be other Rotarians or other people that are in your contact list. 100% correct. Okay, the, now I get it. The, yeah, the custom, and I'm, it's worth repeating, the custom distribution list, it's, it's Rotarians in your club only. So if someone, like a district person or whatever it is, 
they can't go into your custom distribution with contacts. It's a free for all. Anybody you want to put car salesman person I met last night, like it doesn't, anybody can go into contacts. So that's yeah. correct. Um, all right. So okay. anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. And I can definitely say the um, support at clubrunner.ca, I have contacted them when there was something really tricky and they spent, uh, Leslie Barmini and I actually spent probably an hour with the club runner people talking about ideas on how we could do something that was very unusual. And you guys were fantastic and you were you responded to us almost immediately and and spent lots of time with us answering our questions and, and helping us to figure out a way to do something. So I can't stress that enough. If you do have problems, like definitely give them a contact. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we like I said, we love talking to people. Like the, the thing that now I'm going to do the opposite. The thing that we not hate, but the thing we can't control, if, if you're stuck in club or anywhere for whatever reason, doesn't big or small, and uh, if, if you don't contact us, then yeah, we're kind of sad because we can't help you if we don't know you need help. So yeah, uh, a lot of, um, it, you, let's say you give support at clubrunner.ca and our phone number to people. A lot of people are going to think they're calling like Russia or China or wherever. <laughs> like we're we're actually a suburb of Toronto. Well, we're in Oakville. Most people know where that is. So uh, we're in Oakville. And uh, you know, um, so we're actually very, very local. So yeah, we'd love to talk to you. That's That's actually... You know that that's the best, right? And and actually, I had a when I first started working here, I was really scared of angry customers. Now I, I'm not gonna say I love angry customers, but it's it's a it's kind of great because if someone is upset, we can do something about that, right? And, and about 99% of the time, once we talk to someone, uh, we, our term is we 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 pull them off the ledge, right? Some people are like, I don't like this, and I'm stuck quitting, and I'm. And it's like, and like 20 minutes later, it's like, oh, okay, now it kind of makes sense. Now I understand. So anyways, the, the, we really want people to talk to us for any reason whatsoever. But thank you, Mary. Okay. Um, now, uh, any uh, any other uh, uh, questions, Irene, anybody? Yeah, Irene, you're on, oh, go ahead, uh, Miles. Yeah. Well, just really quick. Um, we have 10 of us here on the call tonight. I've learned a lot. I'm just wondering if you're local in Oakville and I happen to be in Burlington and our club decides we like this presentation so much and just the nature of the people in our club, would you come to a, a meeting or do you, would you just do Zoom or do you actually do a physical rotary meeting? Well, I guess the best answer is I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't want to say no off the bat because we have done in person. Um, I'm not sure. It's always a case by case basis and we, love visiting Rotary clubs and districts, but, um, you know, it's just time and resources. We service uh, several thousand clubs around the world. So it's just, um, I guess the, sh the, the only answer I can give you is I'm not sure if you, if you want to contact us, um, we'll do our best. It, it might be zoom right now, just, and, and not because we don't love, it might be in person. I don't know. I've talked to a manager, right. But um, uh, it's just, we can, we can cover a lot more ground over zoom. Like we can do this tonight. Uh, actually some, one of my colleagues is also doing a, like we can cover more ground this way. Um, so, but I guess I'm not, I'm saying I, it's not out of the question to visit. I just, I'm not sure. And it's, it, it's, it's not okay. Um, Mary's her president elect and, and Barbara and I can <laughs> ask her to do, uh, all the, she knows everything anyways. One of the things uh, we're we're looking into is getting into more uh, district conferences, um, right? So, because I know I think your D discon is coming up soon. I think in May or something. So, um, and especially the local ones, right? Uh, here in this area, you know, Kitchener area, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're 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 not long drives for us. So, um, COVID confused us a little bit. We had to change our whole work thing and all that. But and now it's like okay, back to in person again. So. We um, so I'll I'll keep the answer short. I'm not sure we do it as a case by case basis. So if you'd like to ask, we'd love for you to ask, and and we'll go ask our team and see what would they say about that. So thank you, Miles. Um, I see that. Uh, I th I hope I'm pronouncing it. Uh, Irene. Um, do you have a question, I Irene? Oh my uh, my! I just have a comment. I hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Okay, I have used the services of the support because I couldn't remember my my password, and I thought it was they were very very helpful. They walked me through it, and I could I couldn't believe it. And uh, you know, I want to thank you guys very much for for your service. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really, really happy you called. And I mean, you can call us anytime for the next whatever 10 reasons you've got. So thank you very much for calling. Um, now, I want to take more questions. I have something, but I'm going to wait till the end uh, when once we run out of questions. Does anybody have more questions? Any more questions, guys? No, I think we're probably good. Yes, I want to share my screen. Okay, so what we some did, of mine have to do with stuff you're going to cover in advance, so <laughs> that's why. <I'll... laughs> oh, okay, yeah, fantastic. Um, uh, and actually, maybe once I do this, maybe we, we, maybe we might take one of your questions in there, even if it is advanced. But before we get to that, so what I want to do is uh, here. Let me go back to here. I'm going to open a new tab. Okay, let me let me. Uh, did I? I don't. I hope I I didn't put it on the PDF. That's my fault. Okay. Uh, let me write this out and I'll write it out bigger because that's hard to see. At least it'll be recorded on the video. Okay. Clubrunner.com slash training. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to repeat that clubrunner.com forward slash training. What does that do? So uh, we are now beginning uh, the largest training uh, sessions. It's not one Zoom. It's 24. It's uh, several, it's two dozen Zooms over about 10 to 12 days, I guess it's 13 days, sorry. So um, changeover training, Rotary's gonna change over. Your, your old execs are gonna step down. You're hopefully gonna have a nice, you know, president uh, farewell party, all that stuff. And then the new president's gonna come in and the new secretary treasurer and all that. And half of your executives will, I, I'm not gonna guarantee, but it's very likely they've never logged into Club Runner. They may not know what it is and not, might not have heard of it. Changeover training, it's, first of all, it's 100% free. There's no cost for it. It's a series of training webinars happening over 13 days, um, morning, I'm sorry, afternoon and evenings, including Saturdays and Sundays. So we're going through the weekends. You can register. Now, the, the, we kind of want to publicize Club Runner Nova. I, I should probably talk about that in a second, but uh, I'm going to skip over that for a sec. And what you can do is you, it, it's training on anything. For example, this is a new uh, actually webinar, and it's actually what's new in Club Runner. We didn't have this last year. We have so many updates in Club Runner this year. We have an entire webinar just talking about the new things like the mobile uh, app messaging that didn't used to be there last year. And there's other new features in Club Runner. If you register for this webinar, you can um, uh, see all the new things in Club Runner. It'll be exactly this format. You can ask Q and A. We'll have Q and A sessions after. So um, if I scroll down, it's basically everything, or at least everything we try to make it everything: bulletins, um, emails, events, uh, using the district site, being a club secretary or president, like anything and everything, like district grants. Are you a club executive? Here's some training for you. So it's um, it's all various levels of training for everybody, um, uh, not just execs, for non-execs, for PR chairs, for committee members. So there's training for everything now. Um, this is happening at certain times, like let's say 3 p.m. or this, for example, this webinar is 6 to 7 p.m., right? So hopefully, because we want to stress evening webinars, we, we know Rotarians work. Hopefully, if we do enough of these in the evening, right? Uh, you'll be able to attend. Let's say you can't attend any of them. You're out of town, you're whatever, but you really want to, uh, you're really interested in two or three webinars or four webinars. You don't have to necessarily register because if you use this link, clubrunner.com slash training, in about, let's say about a month from now, <laughs> about a month from now, the, the entire training series will be over. This page will be a, um, a series of recordings Instead of a blue register button, it will say view recording. So if you miss the district grants webinar, uh, Friday, May 3rd on two, between two and three, it's fine. The, eventually this register will turn into, let's watch the video recording on this webinar. So if you haven't checked it out already, let me bring that back up on the screen, clubrunner.com slash training. Let me put it in the Zoom chat as well. I'm sorry, I didn't put it in the PDF. I really should have. Um, Please do check it out. We'd, we'd love for, we have uh, hundreds of spots open. 
Uh, and we do get hundreds of viewers. That this webinar has about 20 people. The changeover, we average two or 300 or more. Um, actually, Club Runner Nova, which I'm going to talk about next, is going to have a ton. <laughs> I hope we're not at capacity already. But um, So um, please do check out all our webinars. Uh, if you're interested and you can attend live, especially for one of the evening or weekend sessions, please do. There's zero cost. It's going to be very similar to this. It's going to be a presenter, and then we're going to have Q&A at the end. So please do check out uh, Changeover. I want to talk very briefly about Club Runner Nova. Um, what is Club Runner Nova? It's our um, biggest, oh, sorry. Um, it's our biggest change ever in Club Runner. Um, we are going to change how Club Runner works. We're going to clean up the interface. Um, we're going to add a ton of new features. There's actually been a lot of features released already because of Club Runner Nova. But um, it's basically the biggest release we've ever tried to, uh, we ever attempted to put out there. It's going to be released end of this year. Uh, we've had some huge interest up until now. There's a lot, we have a, we call them power users. We have some advanced users in Clubburner. They're like, oh, great. So tell me about this. And you know, what, what's the infrastructure? What's this, what's that? What are the new features? Like they're really keen to know. So um, uh, if you're interested in what's going to be happening in the next six months, uh, Club Runner Nova is going to be uh, um, a very large change to make Club Runner faster and easier. Faster in the sense that we've had lots of feedback. Club Runner is slow on my computer. My internet's fine. Why is Club Runner so slow? Uh, you know, some of it was our, not any user's fault. It's our infrastructure, which we're going to get a massive upgrade. Uh, so faster. And then the second thing, we're going to clean up the menus, the top menu items. This top menu item, I'm going to go back into Club Runner right here. Um, this intimidates a lot of our users. We uh, make no bones about it. It's well, once again, 100%. It's on us. It's not on the user. Um, this There's a lot of business going on here. There's a lot of clicks and commands. We're going to streamline this. We're going to uh, make this more efficient. We're going to make this cleaner and easier to use. Um, and that's part of what Club Runner uh, Nova is going to be all about. There's more facets to it. So if anybody has any questions or, you know, please attend the webinar, we're going to record everything. Okay. Let me stop sharing for a second. Um, I, I hope that you might find that useful. Um, Are you uh, still looking for clubs to be your beta testers? Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. If, if you'd like to be a beta tester. Um, yeah, the easiest Does the whole way club to... have to do it or is it just some people can do it? Um, just some people. Let, let's define beta tester because that's a great term that some of you may not know what, what it, that even means. We have, uh, we have, you know, all of our clubs and a, so, some of our clubs are what we call beta testers. They get the um, new or kind of bleeding edge updates first. They test in the beta phases and then the rest of our clubs get it later, but they're the kind of the uh, the pioneers, I guess. They're trying out all new modules or whatever, and it doesn't have to be the whole club. Usually the beta testers comprises like maybe two or three members. They're the ones who are really keen on it. They're the ones who are comfortable with technology. So yeah, if you'd like to be a beta tester, we'd love to have you. You basically just sign up to a list, and the next time we push out a, a new feature, the beta testers get first crack at it. And then we usually roll out to everybody else. After the, we get some great beta yeah. tester feedback, that's always great. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Mary, if you're interested, just need a support at clubrunner.ca, we'll put you on that list. We'll make okay. sure. Okay. Um, and then uh, any, any other questions at all? So my um, quick question had to do with the volunteer module. So I don't know if that's of interest to anybody else. Um, but... Just curious, um, when I use the, the the volunteer module, which I know a lot of clubs are using, mm -hmm. um, I I can easily send out a message to all the people that I want to send the message out to. But if I mm -hmm. want to include a link, so I want to just set up a just a regular email because I want it to go out to some people in the community, for example, how do I embed the the right link because what happens is if I copy and paste the link that goes out to myself like if I sent it out to all of my members for example and then I copy and paste that link to put into just a regular email it takes them to my it, it, it auto fills my name in there is there a way to download that link that it it's just open to anybody and it'll that's a phenomenal to be able to 
I've yet to be able to figure out how to do that. I can try it all kinds of different ways, but. That's a phenomenal question with like 20 moving parts. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and translate because I don't know if, uh, and, I, and I hope I'm not making assumptions. I don't know if everybody understood the question. We're okay. saying we have the vault. First of all, I don't know if everybody knows what the volunteers module is. Because like I said, we this is beginner uh, webinar today. So if you yeah. don't, uh, and I'm going to share my screen in a second, but the volunteers module, we have an events module for a club events. The volunteers module, let's recruit uh, members of our you know club. Uh, they need, we're having a barbecue. We need people to bring tanks or be the grill master or whatever, you know, or be drivers. So that's what the volunteers module is. And uh, what what uh, Mary wants to uh, is asking is, there's specific links that you can send to people. There's member only links, meaning, excuse me, hey, sign up for this, do this, do that. We'll have a, a login. Perfect. I, I already know my login. It's fine. Yeah. What if you send a special link like that to a non-member? What happens there? Um, uh, so. I'm sorry, excuse me. Let's go share my screen. And uh, thank you, Miles. I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for, uh, we're going to go right till 8.30. So let's go here. I mean, stop coughing. Sorry about that. We'll go, go here. And we haven't talked about volunteers today at all. We will for the advanced. We click on volunteers and click on view sign up lists. So the volunteer sign up lists, um, there's two kinds. First of all, what is a volunteer sign-up list? It's a list that people can sign up for. Most clubs, uh, maybe in the past, you had a clipboard and you're like, hey, can you, I don't know, be our grill master, be our driver, whatever, uh, sign this clipboard thing. And I hope that I don't lose this piece of paper. So all of that is now online. And you can email your entire club and say, hey, we've got five volunteer spots open. I'm going to check next week because maybe only three of them are filled. That's what a sign-up list is. It's a way for you to digitize um, and do all this stuff over email. So this is a sign-up list. There's two types. There's a private members-only sign-up list and a public sign-up list. Now, the private members-only sign-up list, that's standard for every club website in District 70 If you're running Club Runner and you have access to the volunteers module, you're going to get a standard private members-only list. So Mary, what you might be doing is you might be sending that private member-only sign-up list to members of the public and then they get kind of or you know it might be filling in your info and all this other stuff no so, i've made i've made it public made it public yeah it's just the link that i send to them mm -hmm. where do i get that link that's where that's my right. so right here this is um uh, there there's a public sign up list that's number two i'm going to click on this okay. um this is this is a private list the reason I know it's private, I haven't left my website. I still got the right. blue tabs here. So this I can I can send and all that, but you know, I here's a link and it's but it, if you're not a member of the club, you won't be able to log in and see this. So right. let me just see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on settings. Yeah. I'm gonna make the list. Oh, why didn't I turn this on? I'm sorry. Yeah, it should be that's my fault. I didn't get this ready for today, but yeah. um, um I sh I should make a public list. Um, sorry about that. I guess I didn't set up the website properly for tonight. Uh, I will for next week. Sorry about that, Mary. But okay, that's in, fine. Yeah. Um, well, and now it's thinking here. Let's go here. Okay. So um, this list should be open to the public. And then what you do is write. This is not. This is none of these um, lists are open to the public. See, it's not checked. Let's say it is. And I'm sorry I, I didn't turn this on today. Right click and copy the link. Okay. And you send the public sign up list to whoever you want to any, it doesn't have so to be. So I can number. just use my Gmail with that. Absolutely. You can use anything you want. Okay. The public sign up list is public. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to have a login. And you can just send that list, uh, the public list to anybody. Okay. If it's not working, please, please email us. We'll find that the link so for you. Quick question. Time. I'm looking at mine right now. And under the open to public, I have a check mark there. Fantastic. But there's nothing that I can click to link. Or is it Maybe. just the sign up list? I still click the sign up list. Well, mine just doesn't have the check because I didn't yeah. turn it on today. But just assume, but, yeah. So just assume that has a check mark beside it. I'd yeah, still yeah. use that sign up list. You'd use like, this, you'd right click and you'd copy it. And, okay. and then All you right. send it to anybody you feel like. If it's a public, 
excuse me, if the check is here, it's public. Yeah. Uh, just anybody can sign up. That's the whole point okay. of the public. I'll try that again. I that's how I thought I did it, and I don't. I didn't think that worked properly. Okay, I will try that again, making sure that it's open to the public. And uh, yeah, I just. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll give it yeah. a whirl. <laughs> yeah, and if it still doesn't work, please contact us. Or, or, I know, or I know on, where to call, Vicky. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, and we're on email, so you can just reply to the email we've got. I, I, yeah, we'd love to help. Um, uh, okay. I, what I will do is here. I'll stop sharing. I, I guess I'll let uh, Mary take over. I know I, I, now we're at eight thirty. I just want to say thank you so much. I'm really glad we could do this. I'm really glad we can do this again next Thursday. So mm -hmm. I'll let Mary take over. But I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Yeah. So thanks, Mickey. Really, really appreciate it. I know we had a smaller group. I did hear from a lot of people that wanted to sign up, but they were like, "Thursday's not a good night," and are we going to do it again? And blah blah blah. So I've let I've tried to let everybody know that we recorded it. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who will be watching the recording. Uh, so you can send that to me and I'll make sure it's on our district site and I'll make sure that um, PDF is attached to the recording. So everybody will get that as well. Um, but it, this was great. Um, you know, I, I don't consider myself a beginner on, uh, on club runner. I've been using it for years, but I learned so much tonight. So um, even, even the beginner one, I think is, is worth it for anybody at any level. Uh, you're definitely going to learn some new stuff. So thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. And I look forward to next Thursdays. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.